Hi, my name is Jan Fjorka with the Artists and Planetarium and Cranbrook Institute of Science. This week, now that we've left Mercury far behind and headed out away from the Sun, one might think that our next planetary destination, Venus, would be a cooler, more pleasant and welcoming world. After all, it's the second planet out and so should be a lot more temperate, right? But instead of welcoming, we find ourselves around a world that is so hostile, so alien, that to step on its surface would mean instant death through being fried, squashed, poisoned and asphyxiated all at once. What a welcome! No red carpet here, no, even that would be vaporized too. No current spacesuit exists that would protect us from this terrible fate. Even the few spacecraft landers that were built like tanks that we've sent there have only survived for a maximum of just two hours before being silenced. Yet, you wouldn't think it would be like that there, looking at this beautiful dot in our Earth's sky. It's so pretty, bright, and seemingly benign that it was awarded the name of Venus, the Roman goddess of love. For millennia, it's had a special place for us humans, the third brightest object in our sky after the sun and moon, and so appealing and lovely to be seen, especially at twilight with the crescent moon for company. The Italian astronomer Galileo was the very first to see Venus as another world, an mesmerizing one too, with changing phases visible in his telescope. Like Mercury, Venus also orbits inside of the Earth's orbit, and so we can see the day and nighttime signs at the same time. And just like with Mercury, on very rare occasions, things can line up just right that Venus can be seen moving across the Sun's disk from the Earth. These transits, as they are known, are very rare. And the next one is not until the year 2117. So, if you missed the last one in 2012, sorry. Notice in this picture of a Venus transit that the planet's disk has a slight fuzziness to it. That is Venus's atmosphere. It was discovered in 1761 by a Russian polymath named Mikhail Lomonosov during just such a transit. Over time, our observations of Venus revealed that the surface could not be seen directly through telescopes because it's always cloudy there. So we thought, if there were lots of clouds, perhaps it was a tropical place filled with vegetation, and perhaps there were also dinosaurs roaming around. It was even dubbed Earth's twin or sister because our two planets are just about the same size. Earth is just 500 miles larger. It's also the closest planet to Earth and comes within 24 million miles of us at its closest and was thought of as this balmy tropical oasis next door. Our illusions were shattered, however, in 1970 when the Soviet Venera 7 lander touched down on the surface. It was the first time humanity had landed a craft on the surface of another planet. This is also the first picture ever taken from the surface of another planet. But no tropical forests, no dinosaurs. Instead, Venera 7 and a few subsequent Venera missions found that Venus was a world with temperatures at an unimaginable 880 degrees Fahrenheit, the hottest planet of all, even at the polar regions. Also, the weight of the air above, the atmospheric pressure, is 90 times greater than Earth's, the equivalent pressure that one would feel being half a mile down in the Earth's oceans. Air so thick, it would crush a car and a gentle breeze would knock you over. Our views of the surface, although few, steadily improved. But they continue to reveal an alien and incredibly hostile surface, totally unsuitable for life as we know it. Look at that orangey red sky. Light levels would only be as good as what twilight gives on Earth. The atmosphere is chiefly made up of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid clouds that actually rain sulfuric acid. 
But the acid rain never reaches the surface as it's evaporated in the air by the scorching heat. Upper air winds blow these clouds around at over 200 miles an hour. We also know that Venus rotates so slowly that it has a day longer than its year. One day there is 243 Earth days long, but it takes Venus 224 Earth days to orbit the Sun. How weird would that be? You could actually run faster than the planet rotates if the thick air allowed it. Coupled with this, a suspected flip upside down of Venus at some time has caused it to rotate in the opposite direction to that of Earth. If it could be seen from the surface, the sun would actually appear to be rising in the west. In 1989, NASA launched the Magellan probe to Venus. Although not a lander, this craft was unique in terms of having radar eyes that could see through the clouds as though they were just stripped away. Look at that landscape, Venus revealed. What we see there is incredible. Volcanoes, lots and lots of them. We've counted 1,600 so far, many are huge. This one called Maxwell Montez is as tall as Mount Everest on Earth. No doubt, there are many undiscovered smaller ones too. We found evidence, both on the ground and in the atmosphere, that water once existed on the surface. So perhaps our impressions of Venus as a nice welcoming world were not far off, but the Venus of the past, that is, and not the, the present, as we once thought. So what happened to change all of this? What went wrong? It's thought that Venus shows us what can happen to a planet when the greenhouse effect really takes a hold. The greenhouse effect is where the sun's heat and energy can penetrate through, but are not allowed to dissipate back out into space. In the past, when the sun was younger and cooler, Venus may have been a flourishing planet, not unlike Earth, with shallow oceans, lakes, and rivers. But as the sun aged, it grew hotter, so much hotter in fact, that the ocean started to evaporate. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas, so things got even hotter. Any carbon dioxide in the water, and even in the rocks, boiled away into the atmosphere. Yet another greenhouse gas that thickened the air and heated up things even more. What a catastrophe on a planetary scale. We of course are concerned about the greenhouse effect on Earth. If we want to see what can happen on Earth, if we don't keep things in check, look only to Venus and see the results. The Magellan photos also revealed something else. Very few craters. Only a thousand have been counted and none show signs of much erosion, meaning that they are relatively new. The reason? It seems that some event has renewed the entire surface within the last half billion to one billion years. It's thought that perhaps Venus has tectonic activity similar to Earth, but unlike Earth, there's no more water around to help lubricate the surface, and so areas are trying to move around but can't, and the pressure builds up to such an extent that when things finally give way, they do so in a truly violent manner, unleashing mass volcanic eruptions on a planetary scale, erasing all of the old terrain underneath. It's even been proposed that Venus could be one giant supervolcano that when it erupts, buries the entire surface underneath fresh lava. We see evidence of recent volcanism like here, and so this activity also contributes even more to the thick and toxic atmosphere. Now how about this picture? See those shiny mountain tops? It's thought to be some kind of exotic metal snow. Imagine that, a world so exotic and scorching hot that it actually snows metal there. Well, I hope you enjoyed our foray to Earth's neighbor. We sure had to redefine our definition of it as being Earth's twin. Next week, we'll skip past Earth for now and set course for Mars. Thanks for watching.